to Kevin in UK. And okay. in the and, uh, so it's going to take a uh, few seconds to set up the technology. Okay. Thank you. Keep, uh, maybe go Thank you for inviting Redress to participate in this important meeting. And we are very pleased to be able to join you, um, even though the technology may not be quite as good as one hoped it would be. So as long as people can hear me, I will carry on. Um, the Redress Trust is a human rights organization whose mandate is to seek justice and reparation for torture survivors. And we have been concerned about torture in Bahrain for more than 15 years. We know, in fact, that torture has been a real problem even longer than that. In fact, it has become part of the unfortunate way of life in Bahrain. Over the years, we have met many torture survivors from Bahrain, particularly, as I've said, in more recent times. But I want to stress, therefore, that torture is not something new. And it has not just begun in the last three years. I, of course, don't have to tell the people of Bahrain that. Redress sent two delegates to Bahrain just over two years ago. In other words, after the so-called reforms were being implemented. And we produced a report just under a year ago, which I'm holding up. I don't know if it can be seen. We can. It's called Bahrain Fundamental Reform or Torture Without End. And I want to speak very briefly about that report, as well as the current situation. We highlighted in the report that it was not enough to simply, as the government had indicated it was going to do, make some inquiries bring some um, preventative mechanisms into play to give the appearance of reform. What was needed was real fundamental change. And that, in our view, remains the position. Unfortunately, we know from direct experience that torture is continuing as we speak. Although we have not been in Bahrain since 2012, there are an increasing number of torture survivors who have made their way to the United Kingdom. And many of these have come to redress and we have been able to document, not only by listening to their accounts of what they suffered, but by having them examined by physicians and psychiatrists who have produced reports which corroborate the torture that they have suffered. And what I'm stressing is that these are people who were tortured since 2012 since last year. And I want to make three main points regarding torture in Bahrain, if I may. The first one relates to evidence. And there are two aspects here. Torture is used 
to obtain, amongst other things, confessions of allegations of terrorism, for example. The government uses these confessions to convict people and to portray the struggle of people for basic democratic rights as people who are engaging in terrorism. The Special Rapporteur on Torture has stressed that this use of confession-based evidence is unacceptable. We want to add our voice to that. The other side of evidence is that the government is well aware that the more evidence of torture that there is, the more external and internal pressure can be brought to bear on it. And therefore it spends a lot of energy in trying to suppress the evidence of torture itself. And I'm sure other speakers are going to deal with this aspect, including, as we all know, the attacks on the media, the attacks on the medical profession, and others who seek to document and expose torture. So those are the two aspects of this question of evidence. The regime uses torture to justify its um, policies and at the same time tries to suppress the knowledge, the exposure of torture to the outside world. The second point I want to make very briefly um, relates to the United Kingdom's foreign policy towards Bahrain. Redress is based in London and part of what we do is advocate for anti-torture policies. And we have been very disappointed by the approach that the UK has taken towards Bahrain. In its last Human Rights and Democracy report published just under a year ago, the British Foreign Office claimed that what was happening in Bahrain was a process of gradual reform. In other words, the policy of the British government is to support what is happening in Bahrain on the basis that things are getting better and will continue to get better. However, and I'm sure the other panelists will again be covering this. The question is, is that true? And from what we've seen from the continuous stream of torture survivors coming out of Bahrain, it's hard to believe that there is any genuine reform. And the third and last point I want to make is to, in fact, reiterate what I said early on and go back to the title of our report of April 2013, which I'm holding up once more. And as I've said, its title, Fundamental Reform or Torture Without End, remains the issue. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak and I wish you well with the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much, Kevin, for participating. Thank you for your...